latest monthly economic review report for March authored by the finance ministry underlines that the elevated prices of energy that means fuel and other commodities along with supply side disruptions due to Russia Ukraine conflict pose a challenge to India's growth trajectory the movement in oil prices is expected to dominate inflationary trends in the coming months the RBI too has warned this Today, the Reserve Bank of India chief Shaktikant Das said that due to excessive volatility in global crude oil prices and extreme uncertainty over evolving geopolitical tensions, any projection of growth and inflation is fraught with risk. The RBI Monetary Policy Committee unveiled today the the decision and kept the repo rate unchanged at 4% for the 11th consecutive time. clear sign that RBI is trying a balancing act between keeping the green shoots of recovery alive along with bracing for the tougher tomorrow factoring in the rising uncertainty the RBI today slashed the growth projection for the current fiscal to 7.2% from 7.8% projected earlier the reserve bank of india also raised the inflation forecast to 5.7% from 4.5% So how is this tweaking and recalibrating of forecast going to impact you and me? Is this going to have any impact on the job scenario in the country and the future security? Before we bring in the experts, let's listen in to what exactly the Reserve Bank of India Governor Mr. Shakti Kanta Das had to say today. The Monetary Policy Committee that is MPC met on 6th, 7th and 8th April. and based on an assessment of the macroeconomic situation and the outlook voted unanimously to keep the policy repo rate unchanged at 4% the mpc also decided unanimously to remain accommodative while focusing on withdrawal of accommodation to ensure that inflation remains within the target going forward while supporting growth inflation is now projected to be higher and growth lower than the assessment during february economic activity although recovering is barely above its pre pandemic level against this backdrop the mpc decided to retain the repo rate at 4% it also decided to remain accommodative while focusing on withdrawal of accommodation to ensure that inflation remains within the target going forward while supporting growth real gdp growth for the year 2022-23 that is the current financial year 22-23 is now projected at 7.2% i repeat 7.2% with q1 22-23 at 16.2% q2 at 6.2% Q3 at 4.1% and Q4 at 4%. Assuming crude oil, that is Indian basket, at US dollar 100 per barrel during the year 2022-23, financial markets are likely to remain volatile on rising risk premia, dislocations in trade and capital flows, and divergent monetary policy responses across central banks. Taking into account these factors. and on the assumption of a normal monsoon during 2022 and average crude oil price that is the indian basket at uh, us dollar 100 per barrel 100 per barrel inflation is now projected at 5.7% inflation is expected to be higher growth is expected to be lower but what do these numbers really mean for you let's try and understand from our guest joining us on the broadcast this evening we have dr brinda jagadar independent director and senior business economist and former chief economist sbi sunil alag former md and ceo britannia industries and business consultant we also have with us nitin desai former under secretary general for economic and social affairs of the united nations thank you very much all of you for joining us here on urban debate on mirror now this evening mr nitin desai let me begin the discussion with you you know we all keep on uh, listening to these numbers gdp forecasts that keep on coming and then now most of them have been slashed as well given the current geopolitical situation so if 
the RBI is expecting 7.2% growth as compared to 7.8% growth that it expected earlier. What does it mean for the people of this country? Could you help would, us understand this? Could you simplify it for our viewers? I would say that basically uh, the RBI is right to downgrade it because in some ways the biggest single plus thing that had happened over the past year was export growth. Because you don't really, we haven't had consumption growth, we haven't had investment growth, but export growth has been quite good. Now that is what is going to be challenged by what is happening in the world. Uh, three things. He, he referred to the conflict in uh, Europe. That certainly is important, partly because of its impact on oil prices, partly because of its impact on the European economy. But also the USA, with its high inflation, interest rates going up, there's going to be a slowing down there. And third, which is probably even more critical, is the lockdown in China. If Shanghai locks down, that has a huge impact on world change. So in some ways, the one big source of growth we've had over the past year, which has really been very good relative to 2019-20, which is exports, is going to be badly affected. So first, I would expect some impact on export-oriented industries in this country. That will have an impact on employment, etc. Second, the inflation number that they have projected is probably going to be exceeded, particularly if we have this inflation in uh, commodity price, oil prices and other commodity prices. And if that is the case, then that every ordinary individual is going to be affected because of the high uh, inflation and, and so on. My own feeling is that the revival that we had started seeing with the increase in uh, capacity utilization in industry will slow down uh, unless you have a fairly quick resolution of these. But you still have the problem of the U.S. inflation and the Chinese lockdown. So let me stop here. I look forward to listening to what my other panelists have to say. Interesting points you have raised, uh, Dr. Vrinda Jagirdar. What is your understanding of how the growth targets have been slashed today and what would it mean for the people of this country? Uh, Mr. Desai explained to us that at least in the export-oriented sectors, we can expect job losses if the situation continues like this. Inflation has already started impacting each one of us. Uh, before I answer that, let, let us look at the context. I think this is uh, this time round, RBI usually has a dilemma between balancing growth versus inflation. This time it is balancing domestic factors versus external compulsions. And I think this time uh, external factors have really overtaken or uh, overshadowed RBI's uh, policy and given it less space, less freedom uh, in policy matters. You know, the, the external factors are very important. Uh, global commodity prices have risen, food prices, you know, wheat, uh, uh, edible oil, and non-food also, uh, all the metals, uh, oil, uh, fertilizers. So these prices have, so it's going to cause inflationary pressures. There is supply chain disruption, which again is going to hurt domestic growth, which again, uh, every country's growth, of course. And uh, interestingly, the government has also said, uh, the reserve, the governor has also said that we have a fractured global financial structure. So in this, against this background, uh, it's uh, the growth, the downgrade, and the inflation, uh, uh, the uh, increase in higher inflation forecast has been uh, placed before us. What does this mean for the economy? Yes, growth will slow down. Uh, but then, you know, in, in India, it's just been picking up. Like, for example, we have seen a very strong growth pick up in commercial, uh, in, in bank credit. And we have also seen an increase in the investment uh, grade ratings, which has gone up to 60%. So growth, there's a strong momentum for growth. And I don't think this is going to slow down very much because Reserve Bank is uh, not increasing rates, etc. yet. So I think Reserve Bank is standing by to support growth. The government's fiscal deficit is also being very, very um, responsible. So I think growth support will remain. And where inflation is concerned, Reserve Bank itself says, uh, actually the expectation was it would peak some, sometime in January or February. But now I think it continued, 6.3% uh, is what the Reserve Bank has put out for first quarter. After that, we will see inflation coming down. So inflationary concerns do remain, but I think these are short term and mainly because of external factors. So uh, I think that the economy is not going to be affected. Okay. 
But we need to see how long this uncertainty in the international situation will continue, how long this war and the sanctions and you know uh, all these related uh, factors which are slowing down growth, how long they will continue. My own sense is that we it will be contained and perhaps by, by the end of the year, we wouldn't be able to see uh, an, a rebound in growth. So we, uh, it, it, the impact, I think, would be more short-term rather than long-term. Okay. You believe that the impact is going to be rather uh, uh, short-term and not really long-term. Sunil Alag, how is this recalibration of forecast in growth that we are seeing, not just by RBI, but many rating agencies as well, going to impact the people of this country, in your opinion? Will this impact the uh, ongoing and upcoming appraisal season uh, in you know, the private sector? Will this impact the job market in the country? Uh, you know, whilst both the speakers earlier have gone on to explain in economic terms, look, I'm trying to explain to the people who are watching this program, I don't think the government is going to stop spending on infra and is going to stop spending on roads And in the next couple of months. Look, the war has come on and we have been imposed with certain things and everybody's got to tighten the belt a little bit. And we ex and being everything depends on the monsoons. If we have a good monsoon, the prices will come down. If we have a bad monsoon, we've all had it. So look, as far as we are concerned in terms of jobs, people are not going to start losing jobs because of the war, because of anything that's happening. In fact, there are going to be enough jobs being created because people are the government is going to carry on on its infra spending. But the point remains on inflation. And I think the inflation, as the lady said earlier, Brinda said earlier, look, the inflation is for the next three or four months. And therefore, if it crosses $100 a barrel, there are two key assumptions made by the RBI. One is $100 a barrel being the oil price throughout the year on an average. So it could be 110 now. It could go down to 90. It, as long as it's the average is 100, they're okay. Monsoons will tell us in June or July whether we're going to face anything or not. So look, ultimately, at the end of the day, for the average person, inflation is going to be definitely there. And for people to say that, look, uh, start stop complaining as much as uh, as we normally do and we have to all tighten our belts the private sector must also tighten their belts in terms of not make as much profit as they used to which doesn't mean that they're going to run at losses if they're making 100 rupees there's no harm in them making 60 rupees people will look for smaller packs in the fmcg sector people will reduce prices in certain areas instead of premiumization which was taking place last year there's going to be a down market kind of approach which everybody must stay to survive come out with smaller packs come out but ultimately the people have to realize that look there's a war outside it is not brought upon by the government it is not something which is happening oil prices are not going up because of the government and therefore the oil companies private sector companies everybody must make less money and try and restrict the inflation to levels which are manageable look at what's happened to sri lanka I don't think that's going to happen to India. But there's an opportunity there in terms of exports. For tea, for instance, if Sri Lankan market is hit and Sri Lanka was going miles ahead in terms of tea, we've got a good opportunity for Indian tea to start exporting. I'm not saying that every industry is going to be actually affected by every single thing. There are many green shoots within industries which we have to look at opportunities. If we let it go by, then of course we're... But the next three to four months is going to be tough. Private sector must tighten the belts. Government will carry on spending on infrastructure. And we must stop complaining. And we must come up with solutions rather than just straightforward complaints. OK. Uh, now, this question is for all three of you. And I want to begin with uh, Mr. Sunil Alag, because he's just made a very crucial point, saying that next three, four months are going to be uh, slightly tough for each one of us, for the private sector, for the government as well, because a lot will depend upon what happens between Russia and Ukraine. Isn't it all connected? Because if today inflation levels are rising, the food prices are going up, fuel prices are going up because of the crude oil prices, uh, uh, you know, in the global market. People are not buying enough. People are trying to save some money because things have become quite expensive. Eventually, 
uh, that's impacting our economic growth as well. So shouldn't the government intervene at this point only so that the inflationary shock is very less on the economy and the economic activity continues? Sunil Alak. Look, yeah, as far as the government is concerned, they've planned to spend money on infrastructure. That's not going to stop. If they stop that, then we are talking about something else altogether. So employment is going to be generated at that level. There's no question in my mind. Look, I'm, I'm an eternal optimist. If we don't get a good monsoon, then for a couple of months, if everybody is eating five chapatis a day, we start eating four, or the poor are getting free food in any case. During COVID, the government has gone out and given 700 million people that, look, you're going to get free rations. And that's going to continue. The government is not saying we're withdrawing it away. So look, as far as the poor are concerned, they're taken care of. The middle income group, which I said earlier in the budget, I said, look, the middle income group is being ignored. And the middle income group is the maximum complainer about oil prices and everything else they do here. And therefore, we must tighten our belt. So must consumer companies, so must the oil companies. Everybody needs to make less money. Everybody has to work together now in the next three to four months. And if we have a good monsoon, perhaps when, you, when we meet again in July or August and we have the same debate, it might be different. Whereas if the monsoon is bad, then we are heading for real, real trouble. And look, FMCG well, we can companies really hope and are pray going that the monsoon, to... God yeah, will bless I, us I'm this time. Saying, yeah, but I'm just saying the FMCG companies, instead of premiumization, are going in for smaller packs now at smaller output levels, and they are going to spend more on that kind of level if they're going to survive. So, look, I mean, we can carry on debating this, but I am an eternal optimist. So look, even though the even though the RBI governor, okay. what has he said? Everybody is making and making assumptions today and and going out and saying things, but it's all all fraught with risk in the next two to three months. Okay, but Mr. Nitin Desai, when we all know that the main problem uh, right now is rise in inflation level, won't it be wise for the government to do something about it immediately? Maybe some sort of intervention to bring the fuel uh, prices uh, come down, which will eventually have a positive impact on our economy? Could you, sir, unmute yourself? Uh, yeah. Uh, but the, if the government starts uh, reducing taxes in order to prevent higher oil prices from affecting people, we'll have fiscal problems. Yeah. Uh, I would say that basically it is probably more important at this stage to continue but to But your GST the... collection has been at an all-time high, sir. Uh, that's right. It's good. So at this point, I would argue that the government should continue to maintain its emphasis on public investment spending which is what they're doing with the infrastructure spending, because we need that in order to revive growth and job creation, et cetera, et cetera. So I would, at this stage, actually give continue to give emphasis to that rather than to immediate inflation uh, uh, management. If we get a bad monsoon, yes, we will start have to have a second look at uh, the, 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 the choices. But as of now, I would argue that if I, had a, if I was sitting there in the finance ministry, I would say, no, don't cut, don't, don't endanger your fiscal capacity. Keep spending. If we'll, we will have to, who is going to be affected by the higher prices? It is mainly people who have vehicles, etc. Yes, the rich people are not going to be worried. They can easily absorb it. The people who will be worried are the two-wheeler people and so on and so forth. There will be some impact. You will see that. But, you know, it's a question of balancing out different things. At this point, I would argue that maintaining the incentives for growth remains probably the most important priority. Okay. So you believe that we do not really need from the government side uh, immediate inflation management. Dr. Brinda Jagirdar, where do but you no, stand on this particular just, idea? No, I I because on one hand, yes. No, I would yes. argue that we not, that we not, I would not quite say that. I would say if we were to focus only on the whole issue of should the government reduce taxes on uh, petroleum products in order to reduce risk of inflation, I would say have a closer look because the fiscal capacity to maintain spending on infrastructure is more important at this point in time. 
But that does not mean there are other areas of inflation they shouldn't mm -hmm. look at. If you have a bad monsoon and uh, things crop up on the food side, for instance, we are trying to, we're going to make a lot of money by exporting wheat. We may have to have a second look at that if the monsoon is yeah. bad. But let's not take that down. Right now, let's export the wheat, make money out of it. Okay. Okay, Dr. Brinda Jagirdar, you know, the topic of my debate uh, this evening is economy and you. And our focus is the people of this country and specifically the middle income group, which is getting impacted because of this uh, surge in fuel prices that is now entering our kitchens as well. Vegetable prices have started going up too. Now, the point that I uh, want uh, you to touch upon is... Can some help from the government side immediately in bringing down the fuel cost be useful for overall economic recovery? Because on one hand, if you're uh, spending on infrastructure, if you're building roads and the people who uh, are going to be on those roads with their vehicles uh, do not have money to buy fuel because it's very, very expensive, then what is really going to be the use of that infrastructure and those roads? Uh, no, Hina, that's a very short-term and very short-sighted way of looking yeah. at it. Yeah, correct. The, 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 the government must continue to be on this uh, conservative uh, uh, you know, spending policy and spend where it is required. Infrastructure building is very, very important. You need to support growth. And, you know, what happens when the economy, when the global economy comes back uh, after a few months and then, you know, we'll be saddled with excess liquidity. As it is, 17.2 lakh crore has been injected. So right now, our problem is really targeting, targeted spending. What gives me confidence is that we are self-sufficient in food, unlike Europe, for instance. So that, again, only, of course, it depends on the monsoon. So having said that, and of also we are extremely dependent on oil imports. So the only thing that can be done is that we need to move away from fossil fuels and bring in more, uh, say, solar energy and electric vehicles. That That is something which the government could do rather than injecting money and giving money to people. And, and I think, as our, my panelists have also said, we need to tighten our belts somewhere or the other and cut yeah. down where it is not required. So this is a time to be very focused on what we are doing, whether it's investment or whether it's spending. And uh, we have to make sure that the economy remains on track. After you know, after the COVID uh, blow, economy is coming back in, in, and it's showing signs of revival. The private sector has deleveraged. It's clean, it's showing very good uh, corporate results. So, uh, and it's ready to invest uh, in, in CapEx. So I think that is what we must focus on because that is what will sustain the economy going, growing, going forward. So right now, yes, uh, we've uh, been able to be uh, growth has slowed down and inflation. But remember, inflation 6% is not like what the U.S. is seeing, 8% and 9% also. So we are not in that uh, situation and that is what gives me a lot of comfort. So let's not do any knee-jerk things and let's continue the way we've been continuing. We've been cautious, we've been farsighted and let us build within this framework that we have made for ourselves. Okay, uh, Mr. Sunil, like, you know why I asked that specific question? Because here on Mirror Now, we've been speaking to people across the country on the issue of fuel price hike. Today, we've got reports from taxi drivers and uh, auto drivers uh, in Delhi, NCR and Mumbai. And all today are worried because the high fuel cost is impacting them. Many auto drivers, many taxi drivers, in fact, have stopped turning on ACs as well because they can't afford it the way CNG prices are going up. So so it is impacting a large section of society. What can be done to give some relief to these people? Of course, the rich and the poorest of poor are not getting impacted because there is a lot that's being done. But what about this group, this section look, of the people? Yeah, as far as I'm concerned, look, you have to tighten your belt. And all private sector is going to make less money in this quarter. There's no question if they are trying to say we're going to fleece the market and we're going to take a lot more money in then all of us have to work together because ultimately at the end of the day, whether the price, what, what prices have we got? Have we, didn't we hit about 110 in the months of December? Then when the government, central government reduced the excise, then it went down below. Now it's going back again towards that price. The states have done nothing. So ultimately we have but to Mr. put pressure Alan, on the at states. at that time the inflation 
in food, no, no, one, one second, uh, vegetables, etc. No, 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 was no, no, it no, as second, high as second. it is today? Let's let's deal with oil prices first. When you are talking about oil prices, I'm dealing with oil prices. Now you're talking about inflation on food. There's no harm done in terms of look. There is harm done in terms of middle income group. I'm a great one. I fought for everyone in the middle income group, and the government didn't listen in the budget. But that's that's something we got to wait. We got to wait for three months only. If for three months we can't survive. Then we've all had it. If there's a good monsoon, you'll find the food prices coming down. You'll find if the war ends, you'll find the fuel prices coming down. Everything now for three months for the short term, as Brinda has pointed out, you're raising an issue which the government must do. What if the government does that? What the central government has done is reduce the excise. Now that none of the state governments have taken up any excise, now we got to pressure the state governments also to say, look, reduce the excise. Maybe that will help. But how much can the center keep doing? Everybody points to the center. How about pointing to 29 states that we have? The center has not gone back and increased the excise, no? They've asked, yeah. and none of the states have done anything about it. So the question is, the state governments, the center, the people, and the private parties, and the government, and the Indian oil companies, they all have to pool in their resources now over the next three to four months, and let's wait and see. If the monsoons are bad, then we'll have another chat. Then maybe the government has to step in and do a lot more than what it is doing. Right now, it must carry on spending, create employment, carry on creating roads, and don't think that people are stopping. People are still either coming by road or by train or by anything. Have the number of people come down? No, they haven't. So let's not create a, a, a kind of a, a situation where everybody is in panic mode and everything is happening around the world. You have to wait for two months. Just wait for the monsoons and see what happens to all the prices. Okay. Yeah, just, Mr. Nitin Desai also wanted to come in. I want to give you the last word now. Okay. No, I think you're right. It is perfectly true that what may happen on oil prices will affect taxi drivers, yeah. people with wheelers and so on. Then also ask people to get jobs from the infrastructure investment. Ask them also yeah. if they, how they would be affected if you start cutting back on that. This is why, at this point, if you're really interested in people, then maintaining that the sense of revival of growth, the sense of revival of job creation, is far yeah. more important. Remember, six, seven percent inflation is not hyperinflation. Yeah. It is not hyperinflation. It is inflation. Yes, it is there. It is better than four percent. But six, seven percent is not hyperinflation. It is not something which is going to uh, cripple the economy or these such things. So at this point, yes, by all means, do what you can to contain inflation uh, in other areas. But please do not compromise on the whole growth-oriented infrastructure spending that has been started, which is the only hope we have with the slowdown in export growth. So this is my thought. That please okay, don't just interesting. So the question. bottom line is... Employment. The government should keep an eye on inflation, but should... Okay, so the bottom line is government should keep an eye on inflation, but should not uh, lose its focus as far as growth is concerned. The targets are concerned. Sorry, yeah. I appreciate all of you. Thank you very much for joining us here on Urban Debate on Mirror Now this evening.